So every once in a while, a racket comes along that reignites the spark. These are the rackets that fuel my obsession. As many pure arrows or e-zones that pass through my bag, tempting me to the dark side, daring me to play better tennis to try to win more points. I always find myself returning to my racketaholic ways. I'll go back to those rackets that make tennis feel fun. Because that's what it's all about for us racket players anyway, right? I'm not a pro. My match results don't matter. I don't care about local ranking points. To me, tennis is more about self-exploration. It's that search for the perfectly struck ball. It's meditative, quieting the voices in my head. So all that I hear Oh, nice. Maybe it's the Federer influence, being a player who grew up at the same time that Roger Federer was breaking new ground. But to me, there's just something about red rackets. Head Prestige, the Wilson 6195, the Yonex Vcore 95, the Bablat Pure Storm. These are the rackets that I looked up to, the ones that I wanted to be good enough to use when I got older. Well, I am older now. I've got my own money and I can do whatever I want, so they say. Except I'd have to pay taxes, so. So even though I'm not really good enough for those rackets, I still like to put one or two in my bag from time to time just to experience the joy of hitting. But I'm not sure I'm gonna need to anymore because lately I've been absolutely loving my CX200 and it feels like it might help me win at least as many points as I can with my old whiteout. It brings so many attributes that we love from those old players' rackets in a package that just feels so much easier to use than it has any right to be. I just feel like I can hit quite literally any shot I want with this racket whenever I want to. But the CX200 has one major demon that we need to talk about, and that's quality control. The weight and balance weren't too bad. 301 grams unstrung, 31.4 centimeter balance point. Sure, it's a little under spec, but could be worse, right? Well, things got pretty spooky when it comes to the swing weight. My first CX200 came in at 262 unstrung. This translates to about 290 strung. Tennis Warehouse's spec at the time quoted 314, but they noted this measurement was only based on a single sample. 314 strung is already lower than I feel comfortable with, but 290, that's way off base. That's something you would see in like a junior racket. Even the Pure Arrow Light, a 270 gram option, comes in with more than that at 304. So I did what any sane person would do. I just shit posted all over Talk Tennis forums and Instagram because in what world is it acceptable for a racket to be 25 points off in swing weight? And in what world is it acceptable for 290 to be an operating strong swing weight? Well, Dunlop caught wind of my whining and gave me an update. Apparently demo stock, aka that stock that Tennis Warehouse used to generate the 314 strung is not subject to the same QC standard as following production batches. I don't really know why this is. You would think like the demo stock would probably be like the most accurate, but various sources have reported to me that the average swing weight of an unstrung 2024 CX200 should be about 270, so 300-ish strung. So the frame that I got was actually under spec and the one that Tennis Warehouse got was way over spec. And as frustrating as this is for all of us, my interactions with Dunlop as a company have been overwhelmingly positive. As soon as they heard my first rank that was that far off spec, I was sent a replacement unit from the production batch. This one was on spec, coming in at a near perfect 305 grams, 31 and a half centimeter balance point with a 274 swing weight. Strong with tour bite diamond rough 16 in the mains and sink 18 in the crosses, this translated to 323 grams, a 32.8 centimeter balance point and a 308 swing weight. With a deviously low twist weight of 13.2, that's like weirdly low, this is something that is right up my alley. But still like 308, that's way below any spec that I've ever felt comfortable using and a 13.2 twist weight that's like insanely low for a modern 98 square inch frame combine those both and we should be looking at the most unstable racket i've ever tested 
So why do I like this racket so much? Well, to understand what makes the CX200 special, I think we have to look back at what made classic control rackets like the 2018 Vcore 95 so special. Those classic player frames offered amazing feel, amazing control, and like a brutally unforgiving package. High swing speeds were an absolute must, and the beams were so thin that it was tremendously difficult to access power. The combination of such a low stiffness and a small head size meant that the user's inputs translated directly into the quality of shot. It felt like you, the user, you, were solely responsible for any smoking winner or death drop shot you hit. But of course, the blade was always two-sided. Oh. Thin beams and small heads, they're unstable, they're unforgiving, and immensely punishing on off days. And any and every time you missed, you knew it was 100% your fault. No. Slow feet, bad spacing, oh. late tape back, the list oh. goes on oh. the things that we oh. rec players screw up on like a more than a daily basis, like an every two minutes basis. But with those old frames, so much of the magic came from weight. The high swing weight and static weights mean that if you really leaned into a shot and got it clean, you're almost guaranteed a really heavy ball. But the CX200 is lighter than a diet beer, and yet by some holy miracle, it just doesn't feel that unstable. You can watch this hitting footage with Luca, who off his forehand side especially, hits a very, very heavy ball. And despite using this frame completely stock, it felt like this racket had just enough stability and power to hit through the court. And this is the result of some pretty epic engineering. The Japanese engineering team subtly increased the beam width by adjusting the shape and thickness in key areas. So it's thicker this way, not this way, which is the direction we usually see, and that's the direction we measure for a spec sheet. The crosses are also more openly and evenly spaced apart throughout the string bed, so you're going to get a little more power, a little more spin, a little easier depth from a stronger trampoline effect. There's also more vibration dampening at the 3 and 9 o'clock locations to help reduce jarring on off-center shots. And all these pretty small technical changes work together, giving the CX200 just enough stability to justify it's incredibly low spec. The lightness opens up tremendous shot selection when paired with the uniquely plush, responsive, and organic feel. Going for whatever shot you want just feels super rewarding. And while I do feel more connected with the stiffer feeling whiteout, the CX200 offers some of the deepest and most addictive ball pocketing sensations I've encountered since my 2018 Vcore 95. The dwell time is just so long, feel is so plush that you'd never ever guess that this thing has a 65 RA. And even though my whiteout is more responsive, it's also a little more restrictive to my style of tennis. When I'm feeling fit, I really like to take my time in the rally, slowly build the point, coax my opponent in, go for a nice sneaky little passing shot. And the CX200 just works perfectly for that style of play. It's precise and it loves hitting big spin. Even though it's not like a spin racket per se, it's easily one of the most spin-friendly options I've countered in the lifetime of this chant. The low swing weight makes the racket extremely easy to accelerate, and that low twist weight makes it super easy to modulate the angle of your racket face so you can find the right spin application for every shot. So with this racket, I was hitting some of the best passing shots I've hit in years. It helped me play the tennis that I love to play, and I'm having a hard time really letting it go. But hitting against a really strong player like Ali, who's been playing extra well lately, gave me the reality check I needed. She takes the ball so hard, she hits it so deep, and that 308 swing weight just kind of falls apart at that level of intensity. If you don't have enough time to take a full rep of the ball, you'll be punished. That low twist weight really rears its ugly head on blocking shots. Off-center contact leads to serious twisting if you don't get it quite right. And it's just tough to use unless you're at or above the level of your opponent. Fortunately for all of us tennis nerds, the CX200 takes weight extremely well. I brought mine up to 341 
one gram is a 32.3 centimeter balance point with a 326 swing weight and I found it much easier to play my normal tennis with. But left me wondering why I felt like I needed to add 12 grams to the hoop of my first racket to make it feel normal. So how do I recommend this racket? Well, it's pretty tough. As much as I personally enjoyed using this frame, I have a hard time recommending a 98 score inch player's racket with a 300 swing weight to anyone unless you really love the idea of a big customization job. I personally would way rather use the CX200 than a lot of other rackets. I think it feels more special than the Extreme Tour. Even stock, I felt like I could hit a bigger ball with this CX than the V9 Blade. It feels better, it swings faster, and gives you more spin than the Prestige MPL. It's more comfortable and more predictable than the Diadem Elevate. But for competitive play against strong players, I'm always going to be longing for the rock solid upper hoop of my Slinko Whiteout. My friend I hit yesterday, he said, as soon as I switched to the CX200, it didn't feel like I was hitting slower, but my ball on his racket felt so much less weighty. I couldn't push him back and it gave him the option to kind of take control of the point. Whereas with my Whiteout, I'm always pushing him back. So if you think the new CX200 would work right for your game, I do have affiliate links to Tennis Warehouse, Tennis Warehouse Europe, and Tennis Only Australia. Purchases through those links would of course be greatly appreciated from the bottom of our heart. Thank you. As all commissions earned will go directly into the production of future tennis content just like this. I've also updated my rankings here to of course show the new CX200, but also the new Strike, the new boom and the new blade as I've hit all of those. The blade review is of course coming soon, but if you wanna watch the boom and new strike first impressions, I do have those videos on our membership page. I've also changed my mind on a few rankings with a couple rackets that I've revisited lately just for my own fun, like the Radical MP and the FX500. So things are a little bit different now. You know, this is all subjective, so things do change sometimes. But you definitely haven't seen the last of the CX200 on this channel because I, I still really enjoy hitting this. Let me know what you want to see next. Like, we could review the 400 Tour next, I think, or even more in the mood for the 95 kind of square inch option with the 200.